meeting on Wednesday, September 27th, 2017. If you would like to join me, it's the meeting flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve uh, some different warrants. Uh, and approve an expense warrant from 9-2017 for $213,839.60. Approve a wire warrant, which is for August meals tax from 9-21-17 for $2.58. Approve a payroll warrant for 9-26-17 for $159,900. And approve an expense warrant for 9-26-17 for $2,494.74. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Okay. Uh, now I have, um, I'd like to acknowledge the reports from the um, advisory board. And then I have some announcements. A reminder, the 39th Annual Apple Country Fair will begin from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday, October 7th on the historic Brookfield Town Common. It includes over 70 craft vendors, live music, a quilt raffle, children's activities, apple pie contests, food vendors, bake sale, table raffle, and much more. For more information, visit applecountryfair.com. Now we have some trick-or-treat Halloween events. It will be held Halloween night, October 31st. Trick-or-treat is in the village and common area, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Meet at the fire station for the parade to the common. Parade will leave promptly at 7.30 p.m. Costume contest in the gazebo upon arrival at the common. In an effort to help those who live in the country <coughs> district area, donations are being accepted at the library and elementary school through October 28th. Please remember that these donations are meant to help ease the burdens on those in the village and common areas and are not intended to be your sole risk of trick or treat candy. There will be no bonfire this year. And we have uh, next on our agenda is public access. Does anyone have anything on public access this morning? Okay. All right. Well, we move on to our first. We move on to our first uh, agenda item, and that is with our chief luncheon. And this is about some. Um, it's about some detail monies. Correct. I, I was asked to come to kind of clarify a situation, and I, I, I mean, I don't know that I can clarify it other than, you know, what I've already said. Um, back in either 2014 or 2015, due to the house move, there was some three details that have not been paid. Um, and I guess there's some issue on whether it's, it's Mr. Holcroft who owes the detail or Verizon who owes the detail. Um, originally, we, Holly was told that Verizon was going to pick up the detail. Um, Mr. Holcroft was also told the same thing. Um, we submitted the, the details to Verizon um, and they said they weren't going to pay them. Um, then we told Mr. Holcroft that he owed the details. He was never sent the bill. Verizon was sent the bill, but they didn't pay it. Even though Holly spoke to somebody on the phone at Verizon that said they were going to pay it. So when Mr. Holcroft said he was, when he was told he was responsible for the bill, he said, give me some time and, and let me work on it with Verizon. So that's kind of where we stand right now. Um, we have been talking, you know, some different uh, measures that we can go after Mr. Holcroft to get somebody this money. Or, or Verizon for that matter. Uh, Verizon. Right. I mean, so, the options were making Verizon uh, be held accountable, making Mr. Holcroft be held accountable or going and asking for the transfer of the money on the floor, uh -huh. which I, I have not decided yet. Uh -huh. And it shouldn't be. I don't feel that it should be that. It should come. Right. If, if he has, if you know, if he has paid this, I mean, if he should be the one that's paying this detail. 
Yeah, let me, what, what I'll do is I'll get the reasons from Verizon why they're not paying because the, the confusion came in when they told both us and Mr. Holcroft that they would pay the bill. Yeah. And then a supervisor stepped in and said they were not gonna pay the bill. So Mr. Holcroft, to my knowledge, has not been officially told that he owes the money because every time I've talked to him, he said, let me work on it with Verizon. He was gonna still work on it with Verizon. Because I know you had already paid the details through the detail account. Correct, through the revolving account was paid, correct. The way I feel, and I don't know how the other members feel, I feel that that money should go back into your detail, go into the general fund, and if you need well, that detail money, it's there. It correct. should be paid. Yeah, I agree on so. There's two things. First, the detail, the, he was responsible for the detail, mm -hmm. whether the agreement was Verizon or not. The uh, ultimate person that's responsible was Mr. Holcraft. Further, since that day, uh, there was also a de uh, determination that the trees would be replaced that had to be cut down. Those trees have not been cut down. So, <coughs> until, or replaced, yeah. Or, or replaced. So that on Brenda's list of the things that are in question is that a paid detail was not reimbursed and that trees were not planted, so therefore, at least until such time as those things have uh, happen, um, no permits will be issued. Okay, let, let me but issue him a, a formal absolutely. bill request to you, because like but, I said, it's been in conversation. But on this Okay, because at one point I saw physically saw a bill, you're saying it was never sent to him? I don't, I don't know, Holly could have sent, I know, I know okay, she sent so, one to So there, there was at some point, because at one point I physically had a copy of it, okay. that there was two copies of that bill, one dated, I don't remember, and I went looking for them, I found other things looking for the copies that I previously had of that, okay? Mm -hmm. One of them was issued to Verizon. Correct. One of them, I think it was two to three months later, had a date that it was printed, that it was right. issued to Mr. Holcraft. Right. Okay. And now, I, I don't know whether you- I'm just going on my, I, I'm okay. sure Holly did. Okay. I'm, so, I'm just going on my con, my phone calls, my, okay. my person to person conversation. Right. Here, so, so, just for my clarity, I would like to say, okay, you owe me this money. Okay, so I'm just letting you know, the bill physically existed at some point in time. When oh, it still does. There's, it. Yeah. there's two copies. There's okay. a copy that he had or I believe Holly sent to him, okay. and one that she also okay. sent to Verizon. And, and part of the conditions of the move of that house was that the expenses would not be put on the town. Absolutely. Okay. So I frankly don't, I, I, I don't have as much emotional investment in who pays it so long as it gets paid. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect Verizon wouldn't be refusing to pay it unless they had, feel that they have legal standing, so I, to your point, um, and if you need somebody else on the phone with Horizon, if, if for some reason they don't respond to you. No, they, they, I, I have a contact, I believe okay. her name was Elaine. That I, that I <coughs> so I'd like to understand what their legal standing is for saying they're not responsible, because if they're not responsible, he is. Right, so. yeah. it was because it was a house move and it was not, according to them, it's not work that they normally do, it's not like a, a transformer glue or something like that. Right. They had to take down the lines because he was moving the house. Yeah, and it had nothing to do with any activity that's part of their standard. Correct. It, it should right. be his expense to do it. And then where you said where Brenda's involved, um, I don't know, Brenda, if I'm part, I don't know if you could actually collect this money because you're a tax collector and something like this is would be have to go to a town collector. Correct. So yeah. what I'm asking the individual departments is just to give me an outstanding list okay. that does not need to be an amount attached or okay. even what it was levied for. It's just that it's an outstanding it's an debt outstanding. owed to the town mm -hmm. and okay. we'll go accordingly. So well, in, in, your, in your role uh, as a tax collector, do you have a role of responsibility to the building inspector yeah. or those issuing permits? Mm -hmm. and, and you, and, and you will allow them to understand whether they can uh, mm -hmm. issue permits or not. And that goes for and, uh, planning, that goes for zoning. Department has it, doesn't, it doesn't affect things like, you know, the other licenses like dog licenses or anything like that. It's just basically. I don't think it does. It does. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. I the, the, oh, way I it, the way it's written in the bylaws, it's oh, you I can't issue anything. Anything. Any and all. And I think that this is just a good a wake up call to all of us yeah. as to the practices of the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a, a, a tendency away from accountability for oh, a long time. Yeah. So. 
So I don't know. I do agree. I don't know. Do we want to make a motion that Brenda get um, that Brenda will get a uh, a list from all of the different departments on the outstanding money? I have signed out an email. Yeah, she's on the case. Well, I, I I'd like to make a motion that Karen send yeah. out a, a a supporting email from us that states, look, this is going to be the policy of the town. Please provide this level of information to the tax collector because the departments. It would be exception of the water department basically. And, address, address. and then they'll get sent back to the <coughs> department. That's yep. right. I'm not going to collect the money for them. I'm just going to send them back to them. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'll, I'll second that motion. I think it's, it's time. Yeah, it is. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that's Thank you, Chief, for coming. Yeah. The next one is um, we're going to talk about the community compact grant for the regional financial director. We're going to have a discussion on that. And we had all, I'm sure you all had gotten the letter from um, Bay State Municipal Accounting Firm from Justin. And uh, so I'll let Carrie, our town accountant, Carrie, take over. She'd like to discuss it. Basically, what's going on right now is there are several communities in the state of Massachusetts who have uh, brand new or no employees at the moment. Um, it's very hard to um, fill the shoes of town employees with uh, people with municipal experience. So unfortunately, the towns are looking outside and bringing in people with no municipal experience, and um, there are a lot of towns who are again going through what we're going through not not aware of the the uh, once a year items or the twice a year items or things like that that each department is responsible for so what um, Bay State Municipal Accounting is proposing is that they um, would help us to write help the, the five communities that are involved um, write a grant to the state through the community compact um, efficiency and regionalization program in which this would um, provide funds to Bay State Municipal to financially oversee five communities. This does not mean they want to be our boss. This means that they want to come in and they want to hold our hand through each process for each department and offer us the support that we need to learn the municipal um, structure, the municipal procedures, things like that. Um, this would be no cost to the towns. Um, it would also help uh, the five communities that are involved to perhaps uh, collaborate a little bit more so that um, I would have four other accountants eventually mm -hmm. that I could call, you know, and say, hey, so-and-so, I got this going on, well, what do I do with this, you know, or what, what's your opinion, um, things like that. So it is a finite um, grant. It would run from January 1, 18 to December 31, 18. Um, and it would walk us through every single procedure from setting tax rates to um, preparing tax documents to helping to um, have the departments come and communicate better uh, with the computer system, mm -hmm. um, help us through budgeting, uh, help us to come up with a real structure to our financial team so that the procedures that which we've already started on are, are hammered down and set in stone so that every department does everything the way that they should mm -hmm. be and nobody says, I didn't know, because guess what? Now we've got somebody to let us know you do know. Um, they'll, they'll come up with a kind of an annual to-do list for us to keep us organized. Um, they are going to lean towards um, monthly departmental reconciliations. Previously it had been done maybe yearly if it was lucky. I got it down to um, every couple of months with Sandy and then of course that fell off. Yes. So um, I have been balancing ever since then and um, that's really not the way that it should be. So we need some some direction um, and support for all of the new people in these towns. Um, and then also they would um, help us with DOR with any remediation that has to happen throughout the year. Um, keep in contact with DOR saying, hey, this community, we're working on this this week. Give us an extra week. 
you know what I mean, or whatever the situation is, or can we get it in early, that type of thing. So again, it would be, um, I don't want to throw out the word regionalized because that um, tends to send out a negative message uh, with Basically employees. Basically splitting the bill yeah. and having yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 having an outside consultant to come in and, and, and teach just yeah. the right, right way to do course. things. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. So, uh, just so we're clear, mm -hmm. Basic is going to write a grant, <coughs> and with that, with the approval of that grant, receive monies, yes. and they will be managing the grant. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I guess there's supposed to be some discussion on that. Um, uh, sometime before 1013. Yeah, because there's a timeline for all the grant developments on the second page. Yeah. So the, all the different things that we have to do. Yeah. I'm yeah. Good. Hmm. The, the folks within the town yeah. have work already that's on their plate. Mm -hmm. Managing right. grants yeah. is a lot of work. Oh, lot. no, no, I don't think they have made, no, I was, the, I was under the impression that Bay State was going to manage the grant. I, I, to be honest with you, that's not specified in here. Okay. And so um, I will, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, but on the flip side of that, I don't want the, town, the employees of the town to be burdened. They are to be assisted. Mm -hmm. yes. And so therefore, right. as this thing were to come to fruition, that that be clear that mm -hmm. in fact you're looking for support rather than mm -hmm. to manage. Yes, support. And then it also I read here too it says um, the funds because I had heard some comments that different people had said that we would have to continue on with it with this uh, financial manager but we don't. It says the funds for the project expire yes. December 31st, 2018, and it said. Uh, should the town wish to continue with the services past the end of the period, we will make available and affordable services that build on the foundation laid for the community compact. So we don't have to take on this person right. afterwards. Okay. This right person now. is just here for the year to help us out. Yeah, and the other town. So In the other town. I think right. it's a great, great resource if we, get, if we can get, get the grant. Yeah, if the grant comes through, I think it would be ideal for the town. I know a lot of people are feeling like, well, Big Brother is going to be looking over your shoulder. I'm talking employees. Right. So, um, well, honestly, we need Big Brother looking over our shoulder. That's so, I don't I have feel. a problem with that. No, I think it's, I think so, too. It's there's too many new. I, I admit, I'm still only a year in this. There's a sure. lot I still oh, need sure. to learn. Of course. And I make calls every day. How do I do this? What do I need to and, do? And the problem is, depending on who you call, because so much is subject to interpretation, you could call two people and get three answers Correct. and trying to figure oh, out which of the three that. answers is the right answer. And exactly. Speak, and speaking of that, we're going to jump back into the procedure book and get going. We've done very well. We're about halfway through the procedure book to make sure it's consistent with all Mass General Law and town practices. But we, again, I look to you, Carrie, to help us understand the timing of when we get get that going again. But it, that's something that we just need to keep yes. fighting through. Yes, absolutely. And you know, no matter how many years you've been doing a position, there's always, if you have some training, there's always something oh. that you're learning. Absolutely. You I can't tell you how many times I've been sent to training for the same stuff yeah. and you always walk away always with fun. something. So, do we want to have a motion to do that? You, you, you guys need yeah. to oh, make, I'll make the motion that, that we support the grant, the grant application and uh, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll second that. Okay. And then the only thing that, as you look to who's managing this thing, just to make sure that the burden's not on you, Carrie. So, uh, I'll. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so, we're so do we just need to send a formal communication to yes. Bay State that, that yes. we would like yes. to be one of the sign-on communities for this? There, yes. it's on here. Yes, the Board of Selectmen, um, we have to send a letter and I will have to sign that letter saying that we're in support of that. I, I actually have a conference call with Justin at 10 today, so I will ask him specifically what we need to do for okay. the next step. Great. Okay. okay, thank you, Carrie, for coming forward. <coughs> okay, next on our agenda is some um, furnace quotes for the new furnace. And this came from uh, Bill Simpson. Bill Simpson, and he's not able to be here with us this morning. And he got a quote here from um, McDonald Heating and Air Conditioning and Plumbing Service. And, and the quote is uh, 13000 
$498. And that's Bill's recommendation. <coughs> Bill's recommendation. I make a motion that we support Bill's I'll recommendation. I'll second that. Well, that Although, uh, I'll second it for discussion where there's any other quotes in there. That's what I'm looking for right now. That's what us that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that, that was the only yeah. quote. Well, that's the one that he recommended. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and that was from their committee, so it's right. not right. Yeah. It's just him saying it. Three, good, three different entities. So do we have any one. discussion on it? Sound of you going? Sound of now I have to sign um, the annual EMS original agreement. I would like to have a motion to sign the motion annual. To sign. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now that's the one with North Brookfield, I presume. Um, yeah, this is what we, we sign no. this every year. It's, uh, yes, it's with, uh, it's for the emergency med medical services for East Brookfield. Uh, North, North Brookfield. Oh, that's the regional agreement. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and that's the standard. To provide one. paramedic level advancement support through a regional agreement. So mm -hmm. we sign this normally. So the chair has committed to sign. Yep. Hmm? One thing to make note of, and uh, I'm glad that the chair of the advisory is here, is that. Um, I was going through the um, t old uh, department reports and minutes, um, and currently, year to date, we have hit as many EMS calls as we normally have in a full year. So, um, with any luck, the budget will hold, okay, because that's, a, I believe, a calendar year. Uh, I don't know if that was fiscal year or calendar year. Um, but for the same time period, we're running a little bit high, so there, there may be some need at town meeting to do some transfers. But that would come from the ambulance fund anyway, so it's not it's not a huge issue, but just so that we, we keep an eye on it. So. Sure. Older population. Yeah, our, we have an aging population, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Really and it's been slowly trending upward. It's not like it's all of a sudden it's, it's more, um, and it's not necessarily driven by any unique occurrence. The year prior was kind of the record-breaking year. Now we're hitting another record-breaking year, so. Okay, thank you. So we're all set with that. Now we'll move on to, um, this came from the highway department. It's a, they would like us to adopt a complete street policy. And this, um, from my understanding, is um, the reason we really have to do this is so that when Cindy is applying for grants and things, yeah. this has a this has a major impact on yes, the point system for getting state grants. Yes. Um, yeah. And and they did a nice job with this, by yes, the way. Yes, I know oh, they did. I yeah. Know it all over. So do have uh, do we want to do any more study on this or? Do, no. Oh no. no, no. In, in fact, coming out of the open space meeting yesterday, or the the build up to the replacement of the open space. This builds on the desire of the town, a number of folks mm -hmm. in town, to have connecting trails, sidewalks, those kinds of things, so that if we were, in fact, to ever do anything with a particular street, and the thing that came up yesterday was to go from the center up to 148 mm -hmm. to Devil's Elbow, this money, this allows you the money to actually do that. And, and again, it's not town money, it's actually grant monies yeah, that force you, I, I use the word force, it's not correct. It, it allows you to go do these mm -hmm. things in a smart sort of way. Right. So. And, and the nice thing about complete streets for anybody who's concerned about it, by adopting the policy, it doesn't obligate you to always be compliant to complete streets. Mm -hmm. It just requires that during the planning phrase, uh, mm -hmm. uh, phase, phase, thank you. Some, one more cup of coffee, I think, is what I need. Okay. Uh, that you at least consider, you know, other alternative forms of transportation. So you just you have to show that you, in good faith, considered. Hey, is it possible to just even have a broader, you know, a, a, a broader shoulder to the road to make it safe for pedestrian and bike traffic, or do we need to look at at some alternate means of getting a trail in from point A to point B? So it, it's nice in that it doesn't it doesn't like tie your hands at all. But it does give us that opportunity to apply for appropriate monies to, to stay compliant with our own intent. So the two of a half million bucks a year. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah, it's no, not jump change. It, it, yeah, it's not. It's not pennies. No. So, all right, so I would like to make a motion to adopt the complete street list policy. You have a motion. Second. Um, any discussion on this at all? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Appointment. Okay. Appointment. And, uh, do you have the wage authorizations in the Yeah. They're actually after it. So you want to do the wage authorizations first and then do the appointments either. It's the next folder. Oh, it's the next folder. Well, no, we can do the, um, appointments, the first. appointments first. Okay. We have an appointment here from Susan Brogan to be a member of the bylaw committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2018. And, Okay. You want to do the individual yeah. as a group. Okay, yeah. and then I have another one for a municipal clerk. Um, she is working for the assessor's office, and her name is um, Patricia King. And her appointment also. Oh, we don't have an appointment date here. Too. Well, she just. Well, isn't she a hire? Yes, yeah, she's a hire. Put a date on yeah, that. So she's a hire. On this one. But the, and this is for the assessor's office. And then we have. Um, Emergency operator for uh, emergencies, and that is Linda McLeod. This is for the highway. And another one also for the highway department is Anna Moore. And I would like to have a motion to accept these um, appointments. Do you have a motion? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll sign yeah. those. Yeah. I'll leave you a sign. Okay, now we have um, some wage authorizations that need to be signed. Okay. <clears throat> this is for the, um, these have already been signed by personnel board. So uh, this is for the emergency <coughs> operators for the highway, and it's Adam Naughton, <coughs> Linda McLeod. Yes. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and then we have one for the assessors for P Patricia King. And another one here for Jeffrey White, who we've made a um, position of lieutenant with the fire department. And uh, for Matthew Langevin, he's another one for, for firefighter position. And Luke Quattroselli from the fire, fire department. And also we have, um, I think we did this one last week, but we didn't sign it, for Micah Laird for EMT uh, position, which is a probationary period. So I would like to have a motion to sign this. Motion to sign. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 operators that her got? Yes, mm -hmm. little new operators. Right, so, yeah. so the posting helped yeah. her, or did at least finally find some folks. That's good. Yeah. yeah. before I have to speak to another human being.
couple things you mentioned you might want to talk about. I stuck in there. I don't know if you want to do it. Maybe not. Okay. This is something I guess you were requesting to find out if I would be adding a treasure skills matrix development discussion. Oh, yeah. Cause, but then um, I had gotten word back from Karen that you felt it was a, a personnel committee it question. Was. See, at first when she came, Karen had discussed it with me. I thought what it was, it was, it was something that would help us on our, um, the, you know, when we're doing up all of our um, grade and wage scales, you know, we have to do to see how much, you know, a person is oh. and when we're rating the job. That's, what I, thought, that's okay. what I thought this was. Oh. But then I found oh. out it wasn't that. Well, so, so the question, a couple of different residents of the community had, had come to me about the fact that we had hired somebody once again in the last yeah. two or three hires that we've had for the position of treasurer um, have been people that, that may or may not have had a significant municipal experience, okay? Um, and in the instance with, with uh, um, well, Ms. Creation Alani, um, she had municipal experience, but not necessarily yeah. treasurer experience. We've gone through yeah. the trouble of ensuring that we have, uh, in essence, a, a trainer to help mm -hmm. certify her, in essence, yes. not certify formally, but certify yeah. informally. Um, but it, it dawned on me, based on my experience in human resources, that we didn't really have a, a, a measuring stick for determining, okay, where are we in that professional development at what point do we have a baseline established that we no longer for in order to ensure the financial safety and security of the town no longer need our consultant um, and to in essence ensure that we have a, a steady progression of, of tasks that are getting covered mm -hmm. so that we don't wind up in a position where there's a skills gap um, when we make the call hey we're, we're good mm -hmm. to go with, with yeah. just the, our in-house treasurer so um, I, I basically sat down with the Mass Treasurer Collector Handbook one night after 9 o'clock, so if there's anything mm -hmm. missing, just, just bear with me, and, and, and um, you know, it, it, it's certainly a work in progress. But I figured it would give us a tool that basically on a quarterly basis, um, we could take a look at where we were with that training program, and where we were with mm -hmm. the laundry list of things that a treasurer ought to know how to do, and go ahead and say, okay, now we've got somebody who's who's got a nice balanced proficiency. We're in a position where it's appropriate to to remove that crutch of having the the treasurer consultant um, without necessarily putting ourselves at risk as a town. So that's but, the intent of that. But my feeling on this is, if you're doing this and you're singling out one person for this, what every everybody should have something done like this because we have a lot of new people. It just shouldn't be one person that is singled out and then one of my I, I noticed one of the evaluations on there was from the financial team so i really don't know if the financial team should get involved with this well so that's that's optional okay that's that's you know i i put it there because in the environments that i've worked okay and this is just based on the background i come from that you depending on the type of job that you do Sometimes you do what's called a 360 degree evaluation, okay, where you get feedback from your manager, you do a self assessment, and then either your customers or your peers do an evaluation. And it, I would say it may seem like a signaling out, but we have a very unique situation here, and we have a very unique history this position okay but so I would be time. fine if you want me to sit down and, and I could probably generate one a week for every position in this town I would take you know yeah, I just think I, it's I'd singling out I don't know how she feels about it but I feel it's singling out one person and um, also um, I think if you watch we do have a three-month probationary period so before that time when we bring her in for that we could talk to her to um, the, her trainer and see how he feels that she's doing instead of having all this done up. Well, so that's how we've always done it in the past. Well, I, I think we have a unique opportunity because we're just talking about a grant 
that's going to look at the financial team of yeah. the town. And the interest is that we're all trained up and we're yeah. capable in our, in our uh, job and responsibility. I think we have a unique opportunity where this document is just a draft, as you said, yeah. that, that, that is a recommendation for a position. Yeah. What I'd, I'd turn to say is the regional grant were to be approved, what this ought to do is be a part of their conversation as to what and how to approach training within the the, 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 yeah, ta okay. the, the town. So it's a win-win. If Again, it's a document, it's a draft. We share it with the, the grant team and, and see where it goes because it's just good advice. Yeah, and, and, and let's be clear, I was not signaling out a, a person or an individual. That position is such a critical position. Oh, I understand And, and we've that. struggled I've been around so a long time. I know, yeah. I know. And, we've, and we've struggled so hard yep. with ensuring yeah. that, you know, all of those checky blocks get checked, you know. And, and I, I think we owe it to our employees because and I have no, if, if you're open to them, I have no problem sitting down with the core documents, the, the collector's handbook has it for, you know, even though you're an elected official, okay, you know, it has the same type of information available for the collector. There's a bunch of information, at least on the DOR sites, about your role. There's a bunch of information about what the assessors are supposed to know how to do when they have a certification course that goes along with, with what they do. It, if you, I didn't want to go down that road because frankly, it's a, believe it or not, a, a little sheet like that can be an awful lot of work to try and get it right. If you all want me to continue to go down that road for some of the other positions, I'd be happy to, to, to do it. I, I just want to make sure that we're on board with that it's a good tool and that it's a direction you want to go. I know I got some feedback from some of the other personnel committee people that said there should be at least a fifth row that says not evaluated or not observed. That's great feedback. Well, I know that one of the personnel board, she's not here this morning, she she wasn't for this either. Okay. Oh, who was it? Holly wasn't for it. I think we are in a unique situation. No, I don't think Holly this is more a Lonnie checklist. It's more, we're paying somebody good money to train her, oh, yeah. so we need to know where, where we are. she's at with him training her, because yeah. if, if he's not doing his job, then it's no, it's no slight against her. Yeah, the the yeah. accountability works both ways, Absolutely. both on the train so and I, the you trainer. Know, once you explained it, I actually kind of, I agree with that. Yeah. And this is a normal business practice. practice. Mm -hmm. I've had it in jobs I've had, and at least Cindy and I, I don't know how I had a different opinion, feel well, this is a good tool. It. We had discussed this. This is a good the, tool. And Doug Ford agreed. It's not a witch hunt at all. Yeah. No, it's just it's a tool. figuring out but where she's at. But I think back to the timing in our role and whatnot. Okay. One, we gotta get the financial policy document yeah. up to date. Coming kind of right behind that, and hopefully with the grant, we'll have some resources. Because again, back to our resources and our time. I don't know about you, but you know, as the things that I'm doing that are what I would consider extracurricular to the the role of selectman, mm -hmm. take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. and, and really, as we can take and take the burden off you or Linda or myself, and and get it to people like the, the this grant that we talked about this morning. It's super important that we do that. Otherwise, we're going to burn ourselves out, and we're not going to be able to do the work of the town. That we need to do, yeah. yeah. So, so we're we'll just going to be careful. Yeah, we'll be careful. And what we'll do is we'll wait and see what happens with the grant, and then maybe we can get, a, get involved with this more with the grant when it comes. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, although, it'll be, even if we don't use it necessarily for Bonnie, we may want to have Keith at least be accountable for what he has and oh, hasn't yes. trained on oh, that yes. list. Yes, yeah, yeah. I could, I can, I would, I could discuss that with him and that's show that's him that's the that's list if you want to send me, you know, if you've updated anything, if you want to send me a copy. I, 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 I haven't updated it yet, but I can. I know I got some verbal feedback, but yeah. I'll, I'll so add in the column for the not yes. Then I can sit down with him someday and I can go over a lot of this with him. Okay. Yes. That's what I'll do. I had a thought on that, though. Could you make it more of a training checklist versus an evaluation sure. that changes mm -hmm. the the vibe of the document 100 mm -hmm. for me anyway okay. and it's the same information yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. but it's, it's more of a self-check yeah. for keith to go down yeah. and say yes i've taught lonnie this and for lonnie to say 
Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Wait, the three of us could even meet over. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's a. I think that's a great way to okay. use it because it's not. You know. And I think I probably put it as an evaluation just from a standpoint as we had phrased it as we we're going to reevaluate every 90 days whether or not we were going to maintain the, the consultant or the, the treasurer consultant. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I, I was thinking the term evaluation, but you're right, it's really just a training checklist. Yeah. So if you so. want to get one together, sure. And get it and send it to me, or you can send it to Karen and she'll follow it to me, and then we'll, yeah. I'll go over it with the two of them. Okay. We'll just meet yeah. Excellent. Okay. Okay, moving on from that, we have um, correspondence, which is from negotiations um, with King Casper. Okay, it says, Dear Board Members, as per Massachusetts Educational Laws and Regulations 603 CMR 4104, this letter serves as a negotiation that the Tanhasper Regional District Negotiations Subcommittee will be entering into negotiations negotiations with two collective bar bargaining units in FY18. The Board of Selectmen of our towns collectively have a legal right to have a representative as part of the stra strategy discussion and final ratification vote. The Selectmen's representative does not necessarily attend the negotiation sessions. Only negotiation representatives will be needed to be selected and will serve as a representative from all towns. Please contact my office as a new representative is selected and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Erin and Nozak, our superintendent of schools. So it would be a selectman from the five town district that would be involved with this. So I don't know, we, I don't know if I want to check with the other towns and see if one of them would like to uh, get involved with this. That, that, that would be what I would do. Yeah, that's what I would do. It's fine. Okay. I mean, if no one wants to throw themselves on the negotiation grenade, you could sign me up for it, but I prefer not. Speaking of, <laughs> keep your ammunition dry. Okay, do we have anything else that anybody would like to bring up? Oh, just very quickly. Uh, as far as the uh, Mass Historical and UMass contracts and the like, just yeah. so we're all clear, uh, there's actually a meeting today between UMass and Mass Historical as to the uh, historical registration document, which is kind of hopefully the, the last document that has to be approved between those two entities, so that we would then pay the last, I think it's $4,000 of the monies owed UMass, and with that, uh, Mass Historical would then reimburse the town. So it was supposed to have been done by the 15th, but the Mass Historical guy was on vacation. And then, so, so with that, it didn't happen. Down that path, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the contract administrator for Mass Historical last Friday when Kara Plum and Lois O'Leary and I went to the preservation workshop. We picked up a, a bunch of good information as far as funding sources for historical preservation and the like. So. That was a, a good session to have attended. And then again, I would want to thank all those that attended the Open Space Framing uh, Committee work mm -hmm. yesterday for the Open Space Plan. Uh, what we now can do is we now will have some framing sessions over the year, over the winter, which would put us in position to, again, ask for the grant to rewrite the Open Space Plan. So, progress in both cases. Great. Thank you. Great. Okay. Our next is we are going to go into executive session and then we after we uh, ex exit that then we will we'll come back into our normal meeting and we'll resign. And this is under executive session three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bar bargaining litigation as open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigating position of the public body and chair. So the choice. I'd like to have a motion. Yeah, that motion. A second. Lincoln I. Snyder I. Coughlin I. Okay. Okay, we I'd like to reconvene the meeting at uh, eight forty five. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so and we have Aye. uh Steve Gillis. Correct. And we have Steve Gillis from the advisory board, and he would like to give us an update on how the advisory board is progressing. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for uh, taking me here. Um, I have a statement to read. We, are, we have drafted a statement as to our function and purpose. Uh, it is um, 
uh, it, it's in a it's in a first draft. Everyone's approved it, but we haven't officially approved it. So I'm going to I'd like to read it and then just review some of our next steps. And um, and uh, I will get you a copy of this once it's done. So the primary you know the function and purpose of the Brookfield Advisory Committee. Primary function of the advisory committee is for reviewing departmental budgets and submitting a balanced budget to town meetings. All municipal officers authorized to spend money provide an advisory committee with estimates of how much funding will be needed for proper maintenance of the departments under their jurisdiction. These estimates are used in the preparation of the town, town's annual operating capital budgets. The advisory committee will meet monthly and more frequently for three to six months <coughs> before town meetings. Most of that time will be devoted to budget development and review. <clears throat> Throughout the budget cycle, the committee's main goals will be, one, to optimize the value of each dollar spent, to address the town's long range as well as immediate needs, to present a balanced budget to town meeting, and to pre present budget recommendations in a clear and readable format with sufficient detail and explanation so that town meeting members will, can understand the basic goals, policies, trade-offs, and constraints that shape it. This is right off of a Commonwealth of Massachusetts mm -hmm. documents. Okay. Good, good yeah. Uh, yeah. I know you admiring my writing skills, but not mine. Play, play <laughs> your, play your, this is fine. <clears throat> the rest is 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 from the committee mm -hmm. and it's from sort of a round table discussion that we had. To this end the members of the advisory committee will <clears throat> conduct our business with all officers and townspeople with respect and an attitude of cooperation. Strive to become knowledgeable of each town department by attending department meetings or scheduling time to meet in person with the purpose to understand the goals and needs of the department, understand financial challenges and accomplishing the above goals, and learn of spending cycles or trends that impact their budgets. And finally, to establish a cooperative and respectful working relationship where all parties understand that each of us have a, has a job to do and which we will do to the best of our abilities for the greater good, intelligent growth, and overall improvement of the town of Brookfield. Excellent. That's awesome. Very good. Um, you know, we're addressing past problems and, mm -hmm. and, and, and moving forward with that. We have a job to do, we intend to do it, and, um, and that's, this is how we will do it. Well, um, with, and with all of you being a new, uh, new board members, most of you, I look forward to seeing you know, the hard work and how you're gonna handle the budget situation this year. Well, it was, I'm very happy I was here this morning because it's, it's paramount on everyone's yeah. mind, on the town's mm -hmm. needs. Um, moving forward, there's a couple of things forecasting process. We have a couple of sharpshooters when it comes to budgeting and all. Um, we're ready to get into that. Um, it, to that end, um, uh, we're, you know, we, we, we know we need more education, learning, and direction from the Board of Selectmen. One of the things we're requesting is a direct contact with the Board of Selectmen for these purposes. Um, if that's you, that's fine. What, you know, I, I certainly heard information come from Beth, like what we heard earlier with, with what she's pulling together with this treasury checklist yeah. and all. Um, um, what we're looking for is where do we find this information? What's it all mean? Prop two and a half, stuff like that, okay? So if, if you're the person I gotta call mm -hmm. every single time, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be asking questions like that. Um, if you know, I, I know Beth has this information. This is not decision making. This is just data. The how to? Where? How, how to, to? So she okay. would like to be, you know. I would, it, I'm requesting that. Well, you're requesting Beth, and then I mean, I would. I also would like to know too what the different things that are going to be kept informed on anything new that's going on. Right? I think you'll know that. Uh, it, it is, board, yeah, okay. yeah, you will. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all part of cooperative and respectful yeah. working relationship. Yeah. Um, um, we work. We worked hard at picking these words. Um, so that's moving forward. So that's a request from us. And I think, in essence, the probably the best mode is that for guidance and policy questions, it really needs to go to to, to the chair. Yeah. If okay. you if you just need technical support of where to find the numbers on which website. Yeah. 
Um, right. That so is probably the place yeah. where I, right. I, yeah. right. I'm the geeky resource. And then I have a third role. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm doing it. There's the financial policy yeah. rewrite. Yeah. Is that we had, we took a document, mm -hmm. and it was a good document. No no question about that. But it did not fit necessarily the town of Brookfield's needs. No. So we've met, and we're now halfway through that that document, where we've made it Brookfield's document such that mm -hmm. these are the practices, one, under Mass General Law, and two, that rep represent what's going on with the town. And so as, as that document gets uh, updated and whatnot, more than happy to have you share share that a copy of that with you mm -hmm. so that you understand how the operating policies of the town. Absolutely, and we've got committee people who want to get their hands on this. And if, and, and, yep. and if we have somebody who wants to take over that role of the editing, I'd be more than happy to pass it on. you got a couple people who that are strongly qualified to do that on it, that committee right now. Right, and then again, if there's, a, if there's an opportunity that way, Steve, it would be awesome uh, to have someone who who is more involved. I mean, I did, yeah. in my working career, I spent years doing policy stuff. And so I, I don't have a problem with doing it, yeah. but there might be somebody that's more into the workplace today that has better knowledge, more current knowledge, and I'd be more than happy to, to hand that off to that, that individual if that person were to uh, surface. Great. Um, so much of this I don't understand. Shall we say, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is it's wonderful. Okay. It's okay. I, this is so what I do. Okay. <laughs> Good job, so smart. Okay. Good job, so um, um, What I would like is additional information for that. Our next meeting is uh, either the 12th or the 14th. I forget which. And um, uh, I'd like to just throw it in front of people and say, "This is what it is. Here's what this uh, financial policy rewrites all about." And you know. Uh, how often you meet or when you meet. I'll or send, what, what I'll do is I'll send to Karen the latest revision yep. and have it forwarded to you. Excellent. Yep. And again, it's uh, what I'll do is I'll annotate as to uh, where we are and what, what's done and what needs to be done. Okay. Um, finally, uh, well, I shouldn't say finally, um, part of this is we will be reaching out to department heads and we have assigned department heads, two or three of us to each department head. Our, I think that is a very good idea because yeah. that was done in the past. Excellent. I think well, it's a good idea. It to became do that. very clear to me yeah. uh, in the past budgeting process um, in the spring where somebody would sit down and it's the first time I ever heard about yeah. who they are, what they do. Now, I was new, I mm -hmm. understand, but it was clear that that was everyone's experience. Yes. I shouldn't say everyone, but it was a majority of experience. And so. Um, and our goal is, is, once again, to observe, educate, understand, with the whole purpose of not bringing to the budgeting process any surprises. No surprises. Yes. Let's, you yeah. know, like, let's, let's all above board. Um, me, personally, I was going to approach the financial team, treasurer, tax, assessor, accountant, that sort of thing, and move into that area um, with that. And then capital improvement. No, vital. And then finally is um, uh, the Massachusetts Municipal Association has their annual meeting on October 21st and we have budgeted four people from our committee to go to that. Great. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's so there's four That's of us. We're all going to you know, uh, uh, you know, tailgate. Yeah. Have a great time. I've, I've been to those. Yeah, very good. <laughs> nice. Now, the, the thing that's interesting about this is the demographics are changing, and, and we really have to be in front of it. Yeah. And, and really, your role is to allow us to understand that. Great. Yeah. We we, we I, we're going to do the best. We, we we've got an interesting committee with with some new faces, and then you know, you know. You know, Ken Cleveland, who seems to have done everything in a row. So, you know, it's like, wow. Um, and so, uh, and a you know, good amount of energy and all. And uh, we had a birthday party the last time, and the birthday boy wasn't even there, so we still had the cake. There you go. <laughs> nice. But that's our attitude. That's what we're good. doing. Um, thanks. And, you know, Okay. Uh, Thanks to all of you. Yeah, for yeah well, no, it's, it's, it feels yeah, thank right. Thank you for all, all right. of you coming, for you coming in today and explaining us what you're going to be doing and 
Uh, I do. I, I'm, I'm happy that new people have stepped up to be on the board. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. we're going to do our best, and um, there'll be some rocks, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's it for me. Thank okay. you. I Thank appreciate you, you coming out of the executive yeah. and going back. Okay. okay. You're Thank you. Thank be you. well. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, I almost put crush you there. Okay, so we'll leave now. We'll go back and read the yeah. from this session. We can at nine fifty-five, and we'll go back and do the second session. Right. Okay. So Tara's got to. And Tara's has to leave. And yeah. Tara has yeah. to. We have to take a vote again. Yeah, we have to take yeah. a vote again. Oh, okay. Uh, Lincoln, I. Sorry. Kaufman, I.